G'day guys, welcome back to another Fairy Camp episode. In this week, we've got our boys Sam Kakemba on, where we speak about all things related to self-development. We speak about the importance of community, brotherhood, the importance of setting five years goals and actually reflecting back on it. Um, we also delve into Sam's uh, love for nature, how he uses that as a form of meditation and dialing down in life. Uh, we also speak about Sam's upcoming fight, which by the time this episode drops, it would be on the week of or the week coming. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And if you want more podcasts with this type of style, just a lads chat, one of the boys, let us know. Um, but with no further ado, you know the drill. But about having metrics, like, correct me if I'm wrong, you're saying like, okay, if I'm waiting to feel ready, but I haven't identified things that I know reflect me, reflect me being ready, I'm not going to know when that time might come because I can't rely on that internal feel. Not even running into someone and going, oh, this is this is, this is is the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or, or it's like, okay, I'm ready, I'm down. I now feel like I want a companion in life. Mm. It, it, that might not come about. How are you going to learn about yourself in a, in a relationship without being in one. Yeah, that's very true. As you, as you get into a relationship and you get married, of course, as you know, you're going to learn things about yourself too. Mm. How do I react in these scenarios? Mm. Who am I when I'm with someone else? You know, this is part of that, this is part of that picture too. Yeah. You know, they do say there is a feeling. I don't know. I should probably can confirm like when you uh, know you're yeah. like, you're ready the for it. The only thing is, if you can't picture the scenario because you don't know the person, that don't know the family, don't know that you're going to be moving out soon, you don't know if you're ready. Yeah, it's like before a fight. It's like okay, I'm I'm ready for this. I can I can do this. I can take this on this challenge. So as soon as you meet someone, you get to know them. You know, you have your finances in check. You start you know organizing stuff like, hey, I'm actually ready for this step. Mm -hmm. But right now the step is a blur because you have no knowledge on anything. Yeah, true. Who's the family? Who's the person? I'm actually moving out. Is it going to be expensive? Can I afford this? But when all those things start, you start. Uh, so are you saying down, the person makes you ready almost? No, but you can paint the picture. Yeah. Right now, it's like you don't even know what's going on. Yeah, when you say, meet the person, yeah. you're like, hey, I really want to marry this person. Yeah. Obviously, you do. And then it's like, okay, I'm ready for this. Mm. And they're like, because of how much you want to marry them, you start getting ready for the scenario. I like what you say about, about having metrics. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. You're saying like, okay, if I'm waiting to feel ready, but I haven't identified things that I know reflect me, reflect me being ready. I'm not going to know when that time might come because I can't rely on that internal feel. Not even running into someone and going, oh, this is, this is, this is the one. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> or, or it's like, okay, I'm ready, I'm down. I now feel like I want a companion in life. Mm. It, it, that might not come about. But if you go, okay, yeah, I like that. I've got my finances in order. I've got, a, I've got income, cool. Location, cool. Okay, I can think about it. Whether I, whether I feel like it or not, I know I'm in a position now to, to, to move forward. But... Things might also not always be ready. Yeah, it could be know. different metrics for different people. Yeah. It's like Some having people, kids yeah. as well. Like the a big thing when you get married, like everyone talks about having kids. And it's like most people just like to have kids quick. It's like, are you ready to be a parent? Mm. But when that scenario happens, like you'll become ready. There's a lot of Ali's friends that had kids recently and they would have said like, I don't want a kid this early. Like mm. it just happened like that. True, yeah. You know? That's happened, bro. Yeah, yeah. people are our age. So yeah. you think about how your life would be right now. You can now. say names and we'll bleep it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my example mm -hmm. has a kid about a few months old now and have one next month and you think about our lives if we were to have that not just a spouse a kid as well and of course the kid is so like fully dependent on you in the first year the first year is always even more difficult so you think about how your lifestyle is you know in terms of being at home versus being outside the house doing your priorities mm -hmm. taking care of your wife as mm -hmm. well because she needs emotional care or she needs to work whatever it is you think about like it's and not it's not about you basically. Yeah. I think being yeah. a dad has so much more pressure than being a husband, because when you get married, it's like yeah. you can technically like you say I can leave if I wanted to. Obviously, there's a lot to it, but a, being like a father is a completely different thing. Yeah. And it, if it happens, like a lot of these guys, what, like what's different about it? There's so much more responsibility. Like that person is a hundred percent dependent on you. Your wife, if she works, has money, family, car, like she got, does her own thing. You kind of just hang out, you know, a lot of the time yeah, the when you're single. Huh? Would you say there's more well, or the single the, but living together like no kids? More or the responsibilities are different. When you're a father, yeah. I just think like when there's a father, like you're gonna be thinking, how am I gonna raise this person? It's a hundred percent like on you, uh, the parents. That different is animal. true. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dependence is the key there. I yeah. was trying to just think on, on what's the difference. It's the dependence. Yeah. But say if the child is now 
18 or let's say even 16 yeah. that's no you, go, hey, no you can fend for yourself yeah of course i'm not putting this forward but yeah dependence is a major factor i was even hearing like um some other people talk about you know having kids that, that are older right now but then they're talking about the first seven years <coughs> seven years that period is a long time right basically they want to be around you 24 7 in the first seven years seven years is a long period you think about how you'll have to fo- you have to focus arguably more on them than yourself. But the thing is because as well, seven years of the first kid, but you have four kids over a ten that, year span. It's really seventeen years of having kids under seven. That's yeah. true. I didn't even think of it that way. Yeah, because so it's normal. Like I think about all the age groups in our households. Yeah. There's at least like ten years our yeah. mum was having kids. You know, every two three years, yeah. whatever it is. Man, it, th- these conversations are worth having. I don't know if people have always been. Seems like these days people are more practical with their conversations in relationships as they get in, especially around the ages that we're at now. Mm-hmm. I think it's any. It's, I think it's worth being practical. You know, mm. I think it's worth sitting down if you're if you're serious with anyone and mm. go on go on over these things. Yeah, having a chat. What, was uh, yeah. getting married a part of your five year plan? No, uh, it's oh. part of mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice. Having nice. the next five year plan. Getting I actually have not. Knuckled down a five year plan at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, You've done one in the I've, past though. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've, I've got things that I've got some elements of it mm-hmm. in my mind. Yeah. But I'm yet to really solidify it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good exercise. I'm actually looking forward to doing that soon. Yeah. You think about doing it soon? Yeah. Like, yeah. Inshallah. The timing. I'll take this episode as even a, a sign to do that. Especially what I love about five week is you get, so, like I said, you got so much time because you, you feel. No, no worries to cancel everything, you know. So mm. it's like in that time, usually a few random gems kind of pop through. Could be one of them. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Um, I'd love to touch on the goal setting side of things because now, obviously, even people here in like five year plan, we had one guest on that said like, "I live by goal setting." You know, obviously that's a very important thing having direction. And then one person saying, "I completely disagree. Like, I I dislike goal setting at all." So a lot of people like you know have mixed views and they haven't kind of put pen to paper mm. and that's a big thing like if you've never tried something it's hard to say oh i don't like it it's like me giving you a new dish like a new food and it's like oh yeah i don't like it. it's like you've got to taste it you know yeah. so with goal setting you know obviously you've um probably been doing it for like five six years now maybe a little while longer yeah mm-hmm. so it's one of those things because i remember obviously 2018 when we read our five-year plan mm-hmm. and that ended i was telling the boys it ended may 5th this year I think yeah, it was wow. ended with Jan this year. Like it was a couple months ahead of me. Yeah, bro, I definitely fell off track with the dates there. Yeah. <laughs> used to have uh, maybe. I used to go real hard with yeah. that stuff, bro. We actually recorded an episode. Yeah. Around that May time when he brought it up. Oh, because maybe it was like uh, maybe when you were amateur fighter, you used to have the days like in your bio on yep, Instagram. Yep, like, yep, yep. I even had an uh, look. I had an app. I had it, had it written down. Um, yeah. But the only thing is, like with the five year plan, it's like. You know, the, your life doesn't end if you don't achieve everything in those five years. It's just like a goal. And it's nice to look back on it and be like, oh, five years ago, I thought that would be a massive achievement. And I've done that in two years. Mm, it's like, yeah. damn, I didn't dream big enough. And it's also a very good exercise just to learn to dream big. It's like, okay, some things you might shoot for the stars and it might take six, seven years. But some things it's easier than you think, you know? Look, so, I, I, the idea of planning in, in itself is good. One, gives you a track to run on, you know? Yeah. If you want a little bit of direction and you feel lost, which is a common place for people to be, yeah. why not set yourself a plan? It doesn't always mean it's going to go exactly to the T or this is what has to happen. There's nothing There's nothing wrong with doing it. It's going to give you at the very least direction. Yeah. Mm. What am I working towards? So did you reflect on yours at the start of the year when it ended? Or did you have a look like, or some things, because... I had a list of like 20 things. Obviously, 20 goals is a lot. Mm-hmm. But then there's a couple of things I'm like, alhamdulillah, I achieved that, achieved that. Like one thing was getting married, finishing my degree, mm-hmm. like 100 self-development books, finance goals, um, you know, the podcast and stuff like that, starting a business venture. So there's these things. Yep. And then there was some was like, learn a, learn a language, like besides other than Arabic, didn't do that, yep, like yep. really. And then it's like, okay, you know, it's nice to, it's like, did my goals change? Was it just not a priority? <laughs> It's like, mm-hmm. how'd you look at yours? So Looking look, back at the 2018 a, Sam. And the yeah, yeah. So firstly, there's a lot of self-knowledge you get, right? Because you see what you have done, what you haven't done. And you also are aware of if there's anything that's repetitive, like a goal that hasn't been achieved and you set it as a goal again, it hasn't been achieved. It's like, okay, why hasn't that been achieved? Mm-hmm. Clearly that's not valuable to me. Mm-hmm. Or 
I'm not skilled enough to, to do it. It's going to reveal something. Yeah. So there's been a little bit of that. Um, just in general, over, over the last few years, bro, as, I, as I've just come to see how things have played out for me, some things I'm real proud of. Like I'm real happy with uh, a lot of, a lot of the traits that I have <laughs> yeah. because I can see what they've brought me sure. and where they've brought me, you know, such as persistence, um, self-belief, um, even being ambitious. But I can also see where I've fallen short. Mm. And it's like, oh, in some areas, if I'm not super passionate, if it's not a very exciting goal, I can be very inconsistent there. And that will, of course, lead to poor progress yeah. over time. Um, yeah, that's what I can say about that in particular – Anything else to add, bro? Yeah. I've seen th some things come to fruition mm -hmm. in weird ways and things work in a roundabout way. And I've also, what have I seen? For example, the fighting, I put the most energy into that. I've seen the skills develop there and I've ticked things off. I wanted to be a champion as an amateur, which was back then. I can't believe time flies like that. Yeah. And um, I, I became a, a champion as an amateur on the path to Hex promotion. And... I've wanted to become a champion as a professional and those opportunities are slowly coming closer and closer. Mm. Uh, I wanted to be a UFC caliber athlete and as I've had the chance to train with UFC athletes, I've known that I'm a UFC caliber athlete. So yeah, fighting alone, which is where I put the most energy, that's where I've seen the most reward. Mm. Do you kind of see like some people, well, last time we did an episode, we spoke about being like... Um, being a generalist and then being like specific to one field. Like your literally like your number one thing is MMA and going as far as you can over this period, you know, for the next five, 10 years. And that's what you want to put 120% energy in. And it's, for someone like us, it's like, okay, it might be career, podcast, health, family, Dean. It's like a, you're gen mm -hmm. you want to be a generalist in like multiple different areas. So do you kind of see that where it's like, okay, because I want to put 120% energy in one thing, I don't mind putting other things on pause. Like for example, I remember you wanted to learn like French or Russian. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. that's not going to help me in my martial arts career. So I will put that aside and I'll focus on training and things related to that. Yeah. The, the what's required from training, which is the thing that I'm most passionate about overrides a lot of the others. So my, something I've learned again is that I have a real high standards, bro, when it comes to pretty much everything that I do. So it's hard for me to, have a goal like, you know, where it might be more practical to go, you know what, I want to be conversational in French, you know, or in Russian actually, because French I'm a little closer to. Yeah. I want to be conversational in Russian. Seems a little more realistic or even to, I want to be able to greet people, get directions in Russian, okay, and read Kyrillic. That's a more, real, that's a, that's a more reasonable uh, outcome. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, I want to be 100% fluent in Russian in one day. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, exactly. You know, so it's a mix of thing. ambition as well as a, big, a mix of high standards. And then it's like, because I'm aware of the processes, yeah. okay, well, I'm going to need to dedicate about this much time. Okay, I don't have that time, so I'm going to have to catch up by immersing. So suddenly there's so many elements to just a simple goal and what gets cancelled when I have shit going on, mm. all these other things. Exactly. It's like, yeah, no, I'm going to go training. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Let's delve into that. Where did that um, that high achiever mentality come from? Because it's it's <coughs> not something everyone has, you know what I mean? People listen to this podcast and then the idea of dreaming big to them might just be, seem like just so far away. Do you it's get what it, I mean? It, it, I feel like something, it's just something interesting certain question. people have, yep, yep. you know what I mean? And, it's like and a lot of people, it's like I hear with a high standard. Everyone says, I have a high standard. It's like a high pain mm, tolerance. Mm. Every single person goes, I have a high pain tolerance. So something that's easy on the tongue, yeah. but it's hard to follow through on. Mm. And you only know through achieving. It's like if you haven't achieved anything at a high standard, how can you say I'm a high standard mm. person? Yeah. Look, I think a lot of people say they have high standards as a, as just a, it's, it's, they probably believe it. And it doesn't mean that they might still fall short. Yeah. But they know that their standard is high. Um, and that's probably, that's probably quite common. But to go back to this, bro, yeah. well, psychology, I've learned, tells you that this develops early on in life, you know? And a, a very common way it develops is through the elders that you have in your life. That, or it could be, it doesn't have to be parent, it could be a, a brother figure, it could be 
a um, a teacher, it could be a coach, it could be anyone, it could be anyone that you run into in a community. If they are particularly hard on you, this is a very common way that you will pick up that that will stick with you. Mm-hmm. That can be a good thing. A lot of these high achievers, it comes from there. Yeah. And in terms of dreaming big, I would say, again, we can theorize, but there's just there's just something exciting about dreaming big, mm-hmm. you know, about aiming for something that for the time that you aim for it seems so fantastic, positive, and gives you what you what, what you say you would want yeah. at that time. Hidden desires that you may not be aware of or clear ones. And so you dream big. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a great thing. I think everyone should dream big. I think the same way that you can develop early on in life the desire to dream big you can also develop early on in life the, des- the desire or inability to to dream big yeah, and, and that can also come back to the environment and the voices you had around you that could have dampened things and there are so many factors at play it's really hard to knuckle down on what exactly is going do, on there do you think there's a story like for example you came back from school and you got a B and you go your dad goes no I got to belting and then like I was like damn I gotta, I gotta, I gotta perform standard, <laughs> it's like yeah. Kikimbo's only get A's it's like yep, these kind yep. of things where you hear families have this much like no you're supposed to be a doctor so you're, you're supposed to get A's to be, become a doctor mm-hmm. yeah. is there a story from your childhood that you might think hey you know no but uh, but I've reflected on I've reflected on my, my, my early life and I would say that But you used to go morning runs with your dad, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. But you might just be a family yeah. of high performers. Like, yeah. Yeah, so look. it's not like there's stories. It's just that's what's expected. I'm in trying all to. Areas. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll even see if I can do a little reflection now because yeah, let him yeah. land. Let's see what's what yeah. Let's see. Well, <laughs> even if you're thinking in the meantime, I can say like, um, from an athletic perspective, Sam, it was easy for you to like excel. Like in athletics or soccer or whatever. Like it's not hard, especially in under 18s. Like if you have a natural talent. You don't have to train like a lot of the other guys, and obviously you know that. So maybe you picked up uh, athletics, uh, soccer, mm-hmm. or BJJ, or whatever it was, quickly. So you're like, I want to aim for more mm. because you you're like, I'm not even training hard, and I'm better than these guys. Why can't I be the best in the neighborhood, not just the best at this club? And that's just the talent thing. So one, I'll say like this, this is common because I know that you know the real popular guy right now, Adesanya, has has mentioned this, but. Yeah. Anime actually influenced me a little okay. bit like that. Yeah. Bro, I've got to be real because yeah. me, Sesanga, Seg, we would watch anime. You see Naruto, you see that storyline? Yeah, Come crazy. on. Yeah. You know, it's not even like <laughs> lame anymore. You can't even tease someone watching anime. <laughs> yeah. Five years ago, you can. Now it's like, feel but, like he's the cool guy. But, but, but uh, to be fair, another, another thing I could say, so I would say that because it gives you a storyline which is like so empowering. Yeah. But you got to go, why do I vibe with that storyline? Yeah. Because I must resonate with that. Yeah, somehow. Yeah. And that feeling, I guess, of being let's say in the, in that in that anime naruto of being a an outlier you mm-hmm. know and then having to work really hard to to get whatever it could be it could be approval from peers yeah it could be a, just strength in general in a, in inner approval feeling comfortable and strong within yourself uh, it's like the vegeta in dragon ball z basically vegeta that that's the prince right <laughs> yeah that's yep, the yep. prince getting like that validation goku's the better guy mm-hmm. And like he's always getting recognized. He's the first one to get Super Saiyan and whatnot. Um, and then he's just constantly seeking that validation. And even though he's the second like best and it's like widely known, he always believes that he can take on Goku. Do you know? Even though it's obvious that he's not better than Goku, it's that you know. And obviously, as a younger kid, you know what I mean. You got full of energy and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you're gonna resonate to that. You know what I mean. And and bro, like you said, we could go deep, bro. We can go deep, <laughs> sort, go deep. But but long story short, when I look back on things, let's go deep, Sam. <laughs> sport has always been an area that I loved. I feel a lot of young young men, young boys. Mm-hmm. Come on, not everyone, but you burn energy. It feels good, right? Soccer. I I guess when I would shine on the pitch. Or if I would shine in soccer, it would be a great moment. Of course you like that. Yeah. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to make sure that happens again. Yeah. Um, and when you don't get it, I remember when I didn't get selected for Northwest Wanderers. Yeah. First season. I felt like I, I put myself in anime. Yeah. I went out in the back, <laughs> put a broomstick on my shoulders, put <laughs> books on the side of squats. I'm hitting the squats. That's, to me, that was the pathway. Yeah. It was like, you didn't get it. Like, well, this is what you have to do. To go to where that comes from, man, 
a few other things. My my parents for sure in good and also in negative ways, right? Sure. Where and they always they always stem from the best intentions. They just do what the, what what they can. But the the talk that you get from your from your parents is going to be very um, influential in your development. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I got in some ways it's I feel like it's worked out well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like my my mom would always encourage us, you know, to push for things based on her own upbringing. Because, and this isn't necessarily in sport. This is in academia. For example, language. English, it's in particular, was very important to her that we were good at English. That I remember quite clearly mm-hmm. saying, she would say so, certain things I would remember even now, like, um, you know, people will judge you based on how you, what, what comes out of your mouth, you know. And your mom you has multiple read. languages, but she taught you English at home. And I was yeah. like... That was intentional. Yeah. She speaks, she was a translator. I think she speaks like five, six languages, bro. Wow. A lot. She, so, she understands where that comes from. Yeah. She's not just saying it for the sake of community validation or whatever. And then sport-wise, let me see. From my old man, from example, I guess you just see that guy just training all the time. Mm-hmm. So you train all the time. But also, I do remember this. And I remember when I got my... <laughs> I remember I won a medal yeah. in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. In, and I remember going to my old man to show him the medal. Clear, Of course, I'm here to get approval, right? Mm-hmm. You did well. And he's like... Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, so you got to be real with yourself. And it's like that in some way, shape or form I can see yeah. is a definite factor. You go like, hey, uh, uh, say good on you, bro. You know, mm. give us some props. And I've even had a laugh with him in, these, in this, in the last two, three years as we get, as we got on closer and chat about this mm-hmm. shit. Um, that would be very common in, in, not many people would mention it, but that'd be very common in, in different ways to different extents. For sure. Um, you, you mentioned before when you said, like, obviously your parents, and then you mentioned, obviously, both the positive and the negatives. What do you mean by negatives? When I say negatives, I just mean, I can't really say negatives, to be honest. Yeah. I just say it. a positive would be like a, this is great, this is what you should do. And it's like, yeah. that's how I developed. So I always remembered that. Yeah. A negative would be like the approval one. You know what? All good. But then the person still goes and does the same thing from the, hey, this is great, you know? Yeah. So what, what can you say? Uh also, yeah. every kid's different as well, you know, like going back to like the dreaming big thing, even as much like excellence your parents try to instill in you and they put that like pressure on you, it's not made for every kid. Some kids like actually mm. like gas out, you know what I mean? And later on it comes, I guess, like bite them back in the ass type of thing compared to um, like us, for example, who use that as like a sense of like motivation, mm-hmm. you know, like I know myself personally, like when... I knew I wasn't doing things I shouldn't do. The only reason why I based it off, like in terms of that guilt and all that kind of stuff, it would be like, what would my mum think of this? Mm. You get what I mean? Because she was like harsh on me from the get go type of thing. So there was that like level of respect, you know what I mean? Compared to like other people would be like, okay, cool. Because you treated me like this, you put that pressure on me young. When I get old and I get that form of like independence, like let me wild out. You know what I mean? So ev- I feel like everyone uses it like very differently as well. It's true, it's true. And also that, but for example, when I first started training, and this is funny because it's, it's, it's a different, my parents didn't want me to. Mm-hmm. Soccer or even yeah. um, martial arts. It was like, because my old man did some boxing in Uganda and they have the poorest of facilities. He saw a lot of damage t- take place. The guy can't box, yeah? I need to just yeah. <laughs> I need to put that out there yeah. as a fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right? No, 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 no. He can't box. He'll Give tell you he can stories. box. <laughs> he can't box. <laughs> but when he did boxing in Uganda and in, in the schooling system there, he's, to him it was like, whoa, this is not something that kids should be doing because people are dying. People were literally dying. They would hit their head on the concrete mm-hmm. and they would, they would die. So he's like, yeah, that's not what you do. So martial arts, I loved always from... High school, early on in high school, like even yeah, early on in high school, I love martial arts. Yeah. Like I would be, I remember just searching up different martial arts and watching yeah. shit. And I was like, I want to do this. I want to do this. Like a, he took us to Taekwondo once, and then we never did that again. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, no it's, it's not the best thing. Now he's the biggest fan, but yeah, people rebel. Mm-hmm. It's like if you have that inner. I wonder where I got that from, but that inner, I will always do. Yeah. The thing that it is that I want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Where it's like, and you know how we grow up, you listen to your parents. So other, it might not sound like a major rebellion to other people, but mm-hmm. to do something that, a sport that your parents have said don't do, that's major. Yeah. But I'll do it. And then it's like, 
he, he was like, yeah, well, it is what it is. Jiu-jitsu only. Then next minute, okay, Muay Thai, but just with the shin pads, you know. Yeah. Next minute, you're for your profile. Well, that shows <laughs> you're saying, because I remember you saying in your five-year goals, you were looking for those traits like persistence, but it seemed like you always had it. Mm. So maybe you are just looking for it in a different avenue, possibly, because it seems like you always had it in terms of, oh, now you, actually you can do jiu-jitsu, but only for a bit. Mm. Or you can do Muay Thai, but you kept pushing. You kept backing yourself. You kept thinking, no, nah, I want to do this. I want to do this. Yeah, and so the whole time... It's always been there. Yeah, the whole time through, I was like, I'm going to be a world champion in MMA. But yeah. I just got to be low-key at the moment. <laughs> sure. yeah. Low-key and cut corners at the same time as well. Because yeah. yeah. at the end of the day, they're always going to be apparent to you. Yeah. And there's, there's that like sort of like... How do I say it? Like that soft love where it's almost protective, mm. you know, because they think they know what's best for you. But then also, like, you almost have to show them that, like, like I've got this and I'm going to, like, take control of this boat type mm. of thing. You know what I mean? Do you see other fighters, like, in your club um, or even just peers that have that high standard of, like, excellence? Because, for example, I hear a lot of professional soccer players that made up A League, EPL, whatever. And a lot of them say, like, I barely train. Yeah, I just look, do the bare minimum it's a, it's and a very, just talent that gets them there. I, I'm glad that I got to play a team sport like football, like soccer at a decent level because I, I, it made it very obvious to me, especially once I started training. It's not the same thing, bro. <laughs> a lot of these guys, um, they're not really working hard, to be real. Yeah, They're not really working hard. They train two, three times a week, maybe four times a week, and that's a hectic week. And their training is like, they just rock up and that's that, that whatever they get done at the training, it's... It is what it is. There'll be a few players that they're obsessed. They're watching film. They're studying things. They're doing extra work. They're going and doing drills. But I feel at the highest level in, in these team sports, it's, it's not as much. And it's still at this highest level in, in MMA. There will still be a few people that got there off of talent, circumstance, a few other things. But because the sport is so individual and it's so, at the same time as being you require a team, but it's so individual in nature in terms of you compete one-on-one, it filters out a lot of the people that aren't taking it real serious. Yeah, exactly. So those high standards, they become evident, especially in a gym like Absolute, bro. Guys like Khan, Joe, Sam, Simon, like you're just surrounded. What your normal becomes <laughs> is a decent level from the outside because that's just how these guys perform. And maybe that's unique to this gym. Yeah. And it also almost pushes that like competitive nature out of you as well. It's like if he's gone 100%, mm. I have no reason, especially in an individual sense, you know what I mean, where all the work that you do shows, you have no reason not to give it 100% as well because it's like that inner competitive nature. Yeah, yeah, you rise to the standard in the room, man. And in days where you feel like you're not really doing much and working hard and then it's like, you just got to look at your schedule and what you've done and you go, because you never look outside of that. You don't look at the other fighters in other gyms, what they're training. It's only if you cross train or fight them or do other things, it's like where you kind of, See what's going on, but it's like, damn! You look at it, you go, yeah, yeah. You do want a fair bit. Mm-hmm. You do a fair bit. It's a it's a high standard at 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 the gym that I'm a part of, anyway. How right. has it pushed you, like having that high standard? Because like us, us three, we go gym with some friends, <laughs> and we all like obviously just gym health that kind of stuff. We kind of push each other, and we lift similar numbers. So it's not too bad. Like you can kind of push. But sometimes when you go with like beginners, it's so much easier to become complacent. But if Ali's hitting a PR and I'm like, hey, like I can't do that. Let me try to push to, we're pushing each other to hit better numbers, you or, know? Or even like on an individual day, like where like you go to the gym, you just show up, you know, and you get your reps in, which is good enough. You know what I mean? Mm. Then you compare it to a day where you're not feeling it, but you go with the boys and then after you see this guy's. It's like the best session. It's like yeah. you have yeah. to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. today, before today's session. Yeah. We just hit a session just before this. Bro, I was not mentally in that session today. Like, I was like, Sebs, let me preserve my energy for the recording, like, later on or something like that. This guy chucks on a weighted, um, what's it called? Yeah, like, wait, we did, we did pull-ups, and he yeah. goes, oh, he goes, it was 12 kilos. And I said, you do six clean reps, we'll do, like, three, four sets. Yeah. He goes, oh, nah, 12 is going to be too much. Let me actually just, and then I'm like, just see how you go. Does eight. And then he starts doing 15 kilo pull-ups and stuff. Comfortable, man. And he's like, he did it clean, and he goes, he yeah. thought it was going to drop the oh, weight. Yeah. Until you did it and then you're like, yeah. damn, you know? But that's the impact of when you train. Like, 
and also like kudos to these boys as well it's like when you train with like-minded people like mm. it brings that like out of you bro like towards the end of the session bro i'm not trying to get out of the gym now you know what i mean and i remember two hours ago before that, the yeah. gym you just kind of yeah. had to drag yourself there yeah like i had to once you start sweating it's game over it's mm. it's it's like it's game over type of thing so how's that impacted you in regards to like that community sense exactly the same way then mm. man like the the crew becomes your the, your your safety net also yeah. you know on the days where the only battle really is getting to the gym exactly. and then of course you know you, you're gonna have days where you perform well don't perform well but once you're there yeah it's kind of wraps in terms of you can't be the guy that's not doing anything you know what i mean you, you can't be that's just not how it works yeah. you know? <laughs> like people are going to be training with you even if you're not feeling it they need you to be exactly on point mm -hmm. so that that's just how it is and just in general the standard is high what i noticed in particular Everyone had went, went on this kind of solo journey before getting to Absolute mm -hmm. where they had to develop certain traits without people to catch them, without a safety net. So when we all came together, yeah, bro, magic, yeah, magic. Like, because I know how I, what I had to do and what it was like to have to push yourself and do things solo, you know, before there was a real crew at the gym or anything like that. And I know these boys would have had to do the same things to develop the traits that they got, you know. I see when I, you see when someone rocks up and it's like, I know where he's at today because I know that place. Exactly. <laughs> I've been there. But it's like when you're all there together, man, it's just, uh, yeah, compounds. Yeah. Let's put it that way. And their compounds. wins almost become your wins type of thing. Right, big time, I mean? big time. And plus at your gym as well, you got guys in the UFC, you got guys that got belts. It's like the standard's very high type mm. of thing, you know. And it, it, it filters down from the top, bro. Yeah. Like it filters down from the top. So I, I even see it from the, the, the young ones coming up in the gym. Mm -hmm. They, like I even see the, the, the shock on their faces, not necessarily shock, but like at seeing the level and seeing how the boys operate for the first time, mm -hmm. especially when they're fresh. And it's like, I know what's going on there. And it's almost a blessing. It's like, this is what they're walking into from day one. Exactly. Go, wow, that's, that's yeah. massive. Yeah. It's like one guy that was in the NBA draft last year. He, um, he asked Steph to do a workout with him. And like three quarters to the workout, he was yeah. puking and he left. Yeah, like, wow. can't handle it. Yep. And that's the thing where you watch a video on YouTube, you're like, bro, I can train with these guys. Obviously different level, but um, he was puking. Yeah. And I was like, damn, like, and once you do it, And once you do it, you like, like gain respect for yeah. it as well. Like even last night, I don't know if Sasanga told you, yeah, but I'm training at their joint now, yeah? Mm. And like the first day that I rocked up there, because I'm like, I was sussing a couple of different places, Burak's place, Dominance, yep. is that, you know what I mean? And like the first day I get there, I'm just like, okay, cool. And I haven't trained since the end of like last year, yeah. And when I say train, this is Muay Thai. Uh, no, I was doing Jiu Jitsu. Jiu -jitsu yeah. So yeah. I went my first session. I was doing Jiu Jitsu, yeah. not Muay Thai. Anyway, then, and mind you, I hadn't trained since the end of or like uh, towards the end of last year, yeah. And I'm like, oh, this would be easy just to like get back into whatever. And I've forgotten everything, you know. It's one of those things like if you don't train, then whatever, yeah. And I get there and I'm on the like on the bottom like pause, but like I'm on the bottom and everything, and I'm just like, bro. Like, and I'm watching Volks on the weekend and then I'm watching Adesanya on the weekend. I'm thinking, bro, you just chuck a punch or you get out of it, just hawk his leg. Just hit him once like and then stand up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, then you gain even more respect for it as well, you know? Not so easy. it's like that type Look, of thing. Look, a particular example, I can just run through like a day like, let's say today. You rock up to the gym, 10 a.m., you got boys, they're already warming up, they're already going through their, their, their pre-routine, they're already getting their mobility in before the session. These are things that are small details, but, you know, are regular. But I know that they're small. I see people just rock up, get it done. It's still fantastic. But I'm just showing the level. This is common. And the people come through that have never seen that. What do they do? They just follow that. Mm. Okay, well, we can catch up and talk, but we've got to get our mobility in. We've got to move the body, stretch it, get things happening right. Finish training. Someone hits up for extra work. Usually we already got it teed up. We've got a group chat in advance. Hey, got anyone free, 4 p.m., hit some pads. Okay, get some extra work in some techniques. Someone else joins in. Someone else who's doing extra sprints. Al upstairs. Oh, what's he doing? He's gonna hit. He's gonna hit some sprints on the assault bike. Uh, you down? You're not down? Then they'll start to drag you in. Come on, do it, bro. It's not in my plan. I already got my sprints played out, yeah. laid out. It's like just get them in. Okay, someone might go do it. You know. So that's an example of the environment. And then at the end, you finish and you're having a chat with a coach. He's pulling out film. Mm -hmm. It's like this is what people should be doing. You know, 
at a high level, but it's just regular. This is what we do. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. that look at this technique. Look what he did. Look. Pause that. Mm. Oh, he's grabbing the tricep. Okay. Cool. Like, it's a, it's a great system, bro. It's a great environment to be around. You know, very high technical. level environments. I, I think that's also the difference between like uh, how you can look at like action and knowledge. Because sometimes people have a community that lifts them up, but they don't have knowledge from like the books behind you, like the self development books that teach you to a principle, but it's just a standard of what they do. And that's where sometimes, like, for example, if you're doing everything solo, you have to read the book and it's like, okay, yeah, you're going to act yeah, upon the knowledge. Yeah. It's like applicable <laughs> knowledge and just knowledge is just reading. And it's like, oh, yeah. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. But then when the, the community, it's like hard work. I have some friends that are just, they don't read a book, they don't listen to a podcast, but they're just super hard working in anything they do it's like the high standard i'm like but i have to read like a david goggins book to get g'd up to do this yes, you know yes. it's like that kind of mindset yeah. do you see that often where it's like for example you're you're learning because i know like you might listen to podcasts or whatever but it's like just the community and the mindset of everyone else is enough are you talking like in like the gym yeah not just in general? in general like your own personal development like mm. when you read or listen to podcasts mm -hmm. or whatever you might do is that a thing where um, that helps you a lot or is it the community bit of both because sometimes it's hard for us like if we're not yeah. a part of a community we don't have that uh avenue man it was much earlier on where i was so much more obsessed with knowledge self-development and things of that nature and I actually take this back to, to the first point that's also another point of development and where you develop these traits mm -hmm. i remember being very young even in primary school and it's like it comes down to your needs and wants like yeah. I want to make some money. Yeah. Let me figure out how to do that. Let me read the books. Let me search it up on the internet. Okay. I'm going to end up selling lollies at school, in primary school. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like you, you develop those things out of necessity. Mm -hmm. And then over time, look, lo lo long story short, nowadays it's much more through the community. We share a lot of information amongst each other. Not necessarily things we pick up on day to day. Just something you might know already. That comes up in conversation, like it's a conversation like today. Um, yeah, I, it's not like I don't seek out knowledge. The, the podcasts that I do spend time around now are much more practical. And if I'm listening to a podcast that, yeah, if I'm listening to a podcast now, it's less about, it's more about, I guess, it's a different value I'm getting from it. Because they're going over the same things. Yeah, for sure. sure. The podcast that are practical now would be like a Huberman podcast, right? Where oh, he yeah. gives you, and you go straight to the protocols. Oh they need to hear the rest, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Not at this stage. Yeah. You know, it's like now it's straight protocols. That's what we're after. Okay, cool. I think it's a phase because even me, like I was big into reading. It was like a book a week mm -hmm. without a problem. You know, now it's like we've read a couple books this year because yeah. a lot of the time it's just repetitive. You want to implement now. And yes. also now it's reading books that you haven't touched on before. Like I was reading some like history books. Mm. It's like uh, none of the books, the other books are about habits and money building and, you know, psychology. Now it's like, okay, I'll read history. You might read James Nestor on, you mm. know, nose breathing and something like that. Like, or how to win friends, influence people. Like these things that you're implementing straight away and other books haven't really touched on that. I, w I will turn to the same resources in new fields. Like, if I wanted to get more knowledgeable, if it was from a passion, a place of passion, like breathing, okay. There was that little phase where I knew I needed and wanted more information. So it was going through the, the regular channels, yeah. books, content. There's some new ones as well. It's, it's been pretty cool to reach out to people yeah. directly, experts, and chat to them and they actually hit you back and you're like, oh, this is so much better. Exactly. Yeah. Even end up speaking to them on a the phone or having a FaceTime with this random expert, you know, from Instagram somewhere mm. and it's like, this is not a bad way to pick up information, you know, or yeah, getting it first hand. Yeah. Getting, it, getting it first what hand. What kind of knowledge do they give to you? Like uh, some things you can. The facts, you know, are you talking the like maybe practical with, with steps breathing? like these guys with breathing. What is yeah. it like? Because you know, I know you've been into breathing. Like I don't know if these guys when they train they do nose breathing or nasal no, breathing. No, no, no. So I, I, I take my mouth every night when I sleep. Like sure yeah, today? yeah, every what night. Does your think of it? She tapes too. Oh, <laughs> she, yeah. He's a smart man. Yeah. <laughs> she, 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 starts, she starts talking, talking. Goes, hey, math tape, math tape. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a math tape time? Oh, uh, <laughs> By the way, guys, there's 80% of you guys who watch our videos are actually not subscribed. So <laughs> stop the video right here. <laughs> My voice cut out. Stop the video right here. Subscribe. I'll give him a second. Now we can resume the video.
Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, long story short, when I was with these experts, they gave me all the facts, nasal breathing, CO2 tolerance, mm. all the science, but that wasn't the, the real value there. It was the stuff that was like, don't really worry about all this stuff. Really what everyone is coming, it, really what every protocol is centered around is how well you tolerate CO2. Or don't focus so much on getting guys to do this nasal breathing pattern while they're training. No, so much more important that they tape their mouth and that they breathe through their nose at rest when they aren't training. That's like the base pillar. So I guess they just what an expert should be able to do over time, filter out the information, go, yeah, all these are cool, but really what's important is this bottom of the pyramid stuff. Yeah. yeah like that That would be the most value I got from, and I've got to shout this bloke out, man, what's his name? Johan Segberts. Thank goodness I remember this okay. guy's name. Yeah. He, he runs a... Um, Australian? He's in Australia now, yeah, but I yeah. think he's like... From wherever Johan Segbert's yeah. name should be from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> Norway, to I think Norway or somewhere like that. <laughs> yeah. um, real cool guy, man. We started chatting over over Instagram mm -hmm. just about you know breath work and running tours at that time and getting involved with different ath athletes. Yeah, and that's having very some cool conversations in your game as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah big mm -hmm. time. But yeah, knowledge wise, most most of the reading I do these days, if I read anything, it's for entertainment. For sure, yeah. yeah. It's for entertainment. If I listen to a podcast, it'll be for entertainment. And a part of me still feels guilty, you know? Mm. I'm like, I don't know where that comes from. It's like, this ain't leveling you up, right? But it's yeah. like, hey, you understand bigger picture now. And it's like, there's different areas that are important. So is this this uh, this entertainment thing. It exactly. has a purpose. It's also, yeah. I realized, I was telling the boys, like, you might be reading 30 pages a day and stuff, but is that actually moving you towards your goals like mm. is that actually being productive or mm. is that for example if your goal is to get healthy or to memorize quran or to start a business it's like oh instead of starting my business and working on my business plan i'm going to read today 30 pages mm. on a book mm. and spend half an hour doing that like sometimes it's actually like it becomes an easy avenue to feel productive but by not being productive because yeah. it might be fourth on the priority list yeah you That's feel like you're Doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you feel like you're moving yeah, forward. Yeah. yeah. But for a lot of people, it, it's actually the step they should take. Mm. Like it's it's a beginner step in the self development to understand the world. Put yourself in that environment. Get yourself around after, that type of energy. After mm -hmm. that, it's like okay, what are my actual goals? It's like okay, you know, like mm. Warren Buffett's, you know, like five twenty five, achieving the most important thing, and then you know working down the list. Yeah. yeah. And you'll probably come back to these things. You know what I mean? But it really goes. It really does come down to taking action. Yeah. yeah. It does get to a period of time where like after a while, like Ashraf said before, it becomes very, very repetitive, mm. you know? And then like, and to a degree as well, early on, you don't want to overwhelm yourself with it as well, you know, because like I remember like the first time I was learning about sleep. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. There's this and then there's that. And then you give it a month or two months and you look back at it. It's like, okay, cool. I never actually implemented one thing at all. Yeah, you know, because well. the knowledge behind it was actually like cool, you know? And shout out to Huberm as well. You know on Twitter, you know what they call him? He has a, he actually has a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> they called him Daddy Huberman. Oh well, well, like well, like a C-bum like nickname. Yeah. Uh, Bro, the girls. Goals. The that's girls goals. are proper. They go full oh, beard. Oh, the girls do it? Oh, that's, yeah. that's at least all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's at least all right. Full beard. He's an interesting cat. He's, 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 a, he's solo, right? Like yeah. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's single. single. He's that's single. why. He's an interesting individual because like, of course we don't know, we don't spend time. But when you listen to someone, you pick up on certain traits just through their listening and you go... I kind of, I feel like he would be similar to almost an athlete or someone that was just really. He is. He's, he's different. He's a yeah. He's, nah, he's, yeah. he's different. On that bro. type of vibe. His story, you heard his story. Like yeah. As on the Jocko podcast? Yeah. On the, I think, I don't know which one I listened to it on. Um, it might have been the Jocko one or the Tim Ferriss one. One of the two. Tim yeah. Ferriss probably wasn't his story. I listened to the Tim Ferriss one. Okay. Tim Ferriss one was good too. Yeah, but like, the, sorry. The, yeah. Yeah. the Jocko one was Fantastic because yeah. his Jocko life story, bro, it gave you a whole different perspective. But I'll let, I'll let you run it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he was just talking about like just when he was in that that early stage when he was just a student and like when he was like getting into this career, he didn't know what was ahead of him, but he knew like he was very like invested mm. you know, in like the knowledge aspect of like medical science and whatnot and how he used to sleep in his lab. Yeah, you know, he said like, that on Tim Ferriss. I know was that. Was that yeah. the Tim Ferriss one? Yeah, it was on the Tim Ferriss one, and it's just like. You look at it and you go, oh, he's a scientist. Mm. It's lame. Do you got to go home? Like, go get a girl. Like, <laughs> like, you get what I mean? Like, go I'm do, just, I'm, I'm, go do something with it. You know what I mean? But, like, but then after people look at guys like Huberman. And but it's you like, got to go. 
So go on. Yeah, but like in terms of like successful people, it's like there's a reason why they've reached this level of success. You know what I mean? It's because of the hard work mm. they put in when no one was watching. Mm. You know, this sounds very, very cliche, but it's yeah, like it's, a fact. it's facts. It's a fact. You know, it's a fact. But no. you gotta he's say one something. One of the most popular podcasts now. He bro, he, like killed he killed it. He killed it. He killed it. Subs and he's just bro, killing it, man. His life story. I just want to chip in on it, bro. This guy's life story was so interesting. So mm. much more than what you'd expect. Uh, like what brought him to loving science and all these things. We, we don't know, but he touched on a little bit in that podcast. Mm -hmm. He had a rough upbringing. He, I think he kind of had to leave home very early, 12, yeah. 13, something like that, hanging around skaters. He's actually got, he's actually tatted up a little bit, yeah, but he's, he's, no, that's why he always is suited it, up. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he's still Black a professor shirt. at Stanford. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> so yeah. it's like the guy um, had an interesting run, bro. A very interesting life, moving all about, doing all sorts of things. A lot of his mates are on drugs and, and dead or in prison, that type of vibe. And it's like, it's not, he's, he was just a, a little bit of a street kid. He went through it. Yeah. And then he attached himself to this probably because of what everyone else felt. Hey, I can develop. I can grow through this. Mm -hmm. I mean, let, let, and then he, he went hard. Yeah. And plus he probably gave him some sort of like, I guess, like pillar or something to like a foundation to stick by. And he probably wasn't getting that in like other fields, you know what I mean? And you, you need that. Something that like wakes you up every single morning and drives you, you know? Because you can't just go through life like aimlessly. And like going back to the conversation we had earlier on about like the five-year plan, like half of it of setting the plan isn't actually, okay, cool, you have to knock off these goals. Half of it is just being conscious, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to wake up, let a day pass and then go, okay, cool, what happened to that day? It's like a day is like, what, 24 hours? But like then 365 days, you don't look back at a year and be like, okay, cool. I just like, I aimed for nothing and I got nothing. Mm. And there's a reason why, because you weren't conscious. You know what I mean? What do you mean by conscious? I mean, like just like aware. So like, I guess like, for example, like early on, I used to be so big on like setting goals for myself. And then if I didn't set those goals for myself, because I'm one of those people where I just like look forward, look forward, look forward. Yeah. And I don't really dwell on like the past. Yeah. And then what ends up happening is... After a while, I ended up setting it up too high for myself to the point where, like, I wouldn't achieve things. And then, obviously, that, that will affect me personally, you know, because I feel like, okay, cool, like, I'm underachieving, yeah? Then, like, I dialed it down just a little bit, and instead of setting 100% of the goals, it's just more like, okay, cool, in this field, like, for example, like, there was a period where I fell off the gym, okay? And the gym was a big part of my identity, yeah? And then now it's more so, okay, cool, at least I get to the gym. You know what I mean? So I'm conscious of the actual mm. gym rather than setting it seven days a week, I've got to be in the gym. Five days, I've got to be in the gym. You know what I mean? Because then after that, that task ends up becoming like a burden. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah. once you become conscious of it to a degree, it almost sets like your identity, I believe, personally as well. Yeah. It's almost like it goes to, I have to do this thing. Yeah. Whereas it used to be, a, I get to do this thing. Exactly. You know? And yeah. I, it, that brings a whole different energy. Mm -hmm. it, even, but sometimes you do got to tap into that a little bit. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, when you do understand certain things, and this is an individual choice, yeah. where it's like, hey, I, I know that I am at my best when I feel I get to do something and mm -hmm. I'm excited, I get to go do it. But I also know it's not always going to be like that. Exactly. Sometimes it's going to have to tap into that. I have to. And you just got to know yourself with those things. Yeah. But it's definitely an adjustment I had to do as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sure other people had to do the same even thing. Even like fighting. Fighting at the start might have been like fun and games. And then later, it's like, this is my livelihood. Mm. Like, i got to take yeah. this serious, Making you know? My life. Yeah. yeah, I can't yeah. be slacking off, eating out, whatever it is. And then, that's actually where I loosen my, 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 my boundaries. <laughs> yeah? yeah. <laughs> Bro, oh. food-wise, but I've, it's funny how you come back around, where it was like, hold on, yeah. performance is based on these factors, such and such, and I need to loosen up in one area if I want to be able to be on point in these other areas. Okay, food, diet. But then now I'm actually coming back around to the cleanest quality food is what I want to be entering my body. But that's an example of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You can start to eat and you're like, hold on, why am I suffering here? You go, there was a point I was enjoying this healthy food. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm like forcing it. Mm -hmm. Bring me that HSP. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Get that happening. Mm -hmm. In due time. Yeah. It's and also part one. of like the consciousness as well is like, like I think we've all seen that Denzel Washington quote, like that famous motivational video. You guys seen it? But he talks about essentially, like he's given like a graduation speech. Mm. And then after he references how like the whole idea of like, you don't want a life to go by you um, and you want to be in a coffin. And as that coffin's passing, you don't want that coffin to be filled with regret. When you look back at it, it's like all the things I wish I'd done, you know? 
And the only way you can, personally speaking, you can avoid having that like that regret feeling is in the moment being as conscious as possible in regards to the things that you might want now, you want in the future, and also like reflecting back of the things you want to avoid, you know? And then that gives you like that sort of pushing uh, forward movement, you know? Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Con- consciousness is an interesting one. It is. Um, but you've got to be conscious. You got Awareness is key. It's yeah. such a key trait. Mm. Even people at work, bro. Like, I look at people at work. Like, I remember this lady. No, she won't listen to this podcast. Okay. <laughs> there, I remember there was this this lady, yeah. She, I remember I was having a conversation to her and something about, I think just before I was going overseas. Um, and she goes to me, where are you going? Da, 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 da. And obviously, I reply back into the conversation. I was like, oh, where have you traveled? And mine, she's like 60, pushing 70, maybe even 80. You know what I mean? But we'll go, we'll go 60 just for... <laughs> be safe. Yeah, just to, just, just to be safe. You never know. that. keep us into that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so she goes to me, I've never been in a, on a plane in my life. Mm. And I'm thinking, like, right, that's crazy to me. Like, 60 years of your life, you've never been in a plane. I was like, okay, cool. Like, she, she's like true blue Aussie. Like, as Aussie as you can get, yeah? I was like, so you've been interstate, you know what I mean? Where do Aussies like to go? Cairns or something like that. I don't know, Queensland. <laughs> never left Australia. Yeah, well. And I'm thinking... It's common, actually. I've never left Victoria. Never, yeah. N- okay. N- never left Australia. And then on top of that, never left Victoria on top of that mm-hmm. point. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking, like, how does she, like, like do this, you know? And then you look back at that and then it's like, a cool, like, I internalise that. It's like, if I want to get to that age of 60 years old, mm. I know those are the things I want to, like, avoid. Type but of you know, sometimes you know it's circumstances. A lot of them. I don't know her story. But sometimes then, people don't have the luxury you, of being able to travel the world. Then you take into every account. Six months. Then you take into account. account like you know what I mean? Like a lot of them. I don't know yeah. her story. No, but I'm telling you, then you take into account like her personality, the way that she's just some people are just content with the bare minimum. It can life. be yeah, that case. Yeah. You know I, f- I, mean? I feel like you can always force things to happen, but it depends. There's so many factors and we don't have all the answers. Yeah. We don't have the vision. She but I have five properties and that's her goal. That reminds me of an interesting exercise I, I recently did, which was... I recently felt a little bit lost in like direction wise. Some things are always going to be happening, but I was, outside of that, there's still a feeling of, hey, like what, what am I working towards, right? In a material sense. And it's like, okay, let me work backwards. Okay. And I start, actually started, how do I want to die? You know, where, how do I want to die? How do I want to be, if I, if I had that choice and someone said, hey, you can, you can call it now. How do I want that? And then I said, okay, cool. How do I want the last five years to look? What about the 10 years before that? Before one or two steps, you suddenly not too far. <laughs> it's like, shit, well, yeah. well, what do I want to be doing in my 30s? Well, what am I, okay. I just, it was an interesting ex- exercise to kind of see what you really want to be working towards. Yeah. And that's some just examples of some of the answers you had for different. Or even thoughts. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be too. Yeah. Even something. So, that, yeah. so the, how I wanted to die, what? It was clear to me was I would love to be in nature and I'm not saying die in nature in the forest yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying in the in the last in, in the last few years it would be lovely to have to be spending a lot of time in nature bro deloading yeah. <laughs> yeah. deloading from life For you sure. know <laughs> and just enjoying and with family and to have family around and have doesn't have to be there in that moment I'm talking have that connection have that thing happening and then internally, I want to know that I did the best job I could have done to balance the scales before they're going to be balanced for me. That, that was key. It was like, I want to know that I did the best job possible based on what I know from my own sins and my own virtues and go, okay, we know that, we know that there are ways to, to balance the scales. You know? So it's like, okay, by that time in life, I would, I would, I would want to know that I did the best job I, I could to balance those scales. And that was probably the biggest takeaway because it influences everything from now. And then in the last five years, it, I was like, okay, for some reason, still into, it's still business oriented at the moment. So yeah. that came into play where it's like, okay, well, the businesses I'd like to be involved in at that stage would be more of a consulting role mm-hmm. where I'm able to share my experiences and let those experiences um, impact other people's lives based on what I've learned through, through life at that time. And let's say like the 10 years prior to that, it would be good to uh, to be able to travel the world. Mm-hmm. No, sorry, at that point it was to have something much more, to have something much more uh, concrete 
I guess, and still embedded in nature. It's like a, a decade in nature. When I say nature, it doesn't mean I'm not leaving mm. the forest, boys, you know what I'm saying? But a decade where that's my home base mm-hmm. would be beautiful. I feel like I could really touch touch base with, um, you know, my myself yeah. at, at a core level like that with family and whatnot. Mm, where did I go outside of that? Yeah. Business-wise, I would love to be involved in a health and wellness um, business in a company that was backed by pure intention on health, wellness, and performance from mind and body. So that's a very interesting area to me. I, I accumulate a lot of experience um, just through martial arts and that, enge- and that endeavor. But there's also the psychological side of things that's very interesting to me. Also the neuroscience. I want to see where, where things are at. I'd love to be involved in that field. And I go, okay, well, when you start to move further and further down the line, you get closer and closer to where I'm at now and I'm 26. And I go, okay, so that, that should influence the businesses that I'm involved in. Uh, they should be involved in the health and wellness mm-hmm. and performance sector. Hmm. I want to touch and on I, that. And a gym. I, would lo- I, w- I, w- I believe yeah. I will end up having a martial arts gym. It just seems very inshallah. practical. And, and yeah, inshallah, it will happen. Inshallah, so, yeah. I want to touch on the, the nature thing because this is something that I see a lot and especially on your like your Instagram stories as well. Um, like you see just Sam randomly just waking up in the morning and he's just sparring air. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the middle of a forest somewhere, you know? Yeah. Like or winter like, mornings, yeah? Yeah, and it's a constant theme about you as well. Like for example, on a random Saturday morning, you're going for skinny dip in the ocean. You get what I mean? You get what I mean? You You get what I mean? And it's something interesting because it's outside like that norm. You know what I mean? So what is it about the nature that just gets you going, bro? So beautiful, bro. Mm -hmm. So peaceful. And I enjoy that. In particular, the, the, the isolation early on but that's changing these days i used to seek that a lot and it'll be very hard for me to feel what i feel in pure isolation in in nature just down to bare bare basics let me just finish the point but yeah there's also the stripping things down to the bare minimum cooking getting your fire getting things to the core level and you realize that all the rest of this is not really necessary Mm -hmm. so you get much more um, appreciation in life and it's, that's a great thing to have because as you move around in this world and you're appreciating everything more it's a great place to be um, I love nature bro I love being out there and just living life it feels so pure because you, you strip things back to basics it's literally wake up get your water right get your food right spend some next I want to do is hiking because it will give me a little more momentum you know that forward ambulation human yeah. human talks about yeah, 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 <laughs> it'll yeah. be like once i pack up my camp and whatnot yeah, yeah. i can i can get moving and I, I found in the last few times i went out solo that i had a little too much time mm-hmm. and it's like i would be doing these hikes and stuff but it would be nice if i if that hike was a point in the you journey physical strain as well like that yeah. helps as well yeah, big, big time big time yeah. but i also liked it for meditation and to just touch base with who i am and where i'm at at that particular time How's your sleep when you go camping? Beautiful, bro. How good is it? Beautiful. And plus bro. the, the fact that I went proper camping mm. for the first time last year, at the end of last year. Um, and I remember listening to it, going back to that same sleep like podcast or whatever. I remember during lockdown once, obviously there's the Matthew Walker one, but then there was this like Islamic podcast that done it on sp- um, like sleep. And like he specifically like related it back to like, like the dean and the actual physical, like the sciencey side of things, you know what I mean? And he was mentioning this story about during like Houston when they had the whole hurricanes and stuff, they just had candles and stuff just to keep their house like a light, you know what I mean? For three days, pretty much, he had the best sleep ever wow. because there was no electricity and wow. the, the effect Beautiful, that light bro. has on yeah. your sleep, you know? So I'm like, right, cool, whatever. Go camping for the three days that I was there. When I tell you, cuz around seven o'clock eight o'clock as the like the sun's starting to dip or whatever i'm already feeling tired and seven o'clock eight o'clock it's like seven o'clock eight o'clock right now we're getting g'd up you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you're waking up naturally like it's not even yeah. sunrise like an yeah. effort you know what i mean it's like your body just naturally just like clocks in with it you just that that's the way to put it bro yeah you tap into the natural rhythm of life mm-hmm. 
all this st- science and stuff is just proving what the basics are. View sunlight in the morning, view sunlight in the evening. This happens normally, naturally, without everything that we've got going on. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So there's that. There's also, bro, I make a lot of prayer, a lot of personal prayer um, when I go camping, man. I find beautiful spots. I could be on a hike and honestly, you find little caves, little things under rocks and you go, bro, there's potentially sunnah here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and outside of that, it just, you feel so in the right place for prayer. Mm-hmm. It's coming from the right place. And in particular, your intentions are clearer to you. I feel the further, I noticed this the first few times I went and I started doing it for this reason in the, in the later times. The further away you get from Melbourne, which is where we're from, physically, the things that you're associated to here slowly die away. And it's almost like as you're driving, you're aware of what your mind goes to. It's like, hey, my mind keeps going to this, that, this, that. It's all related to things i got going on here, right? After one day, maybe two days, it's not all peace when you're out there. You're still there and you're like, oh, damn, now I'm here. You know what yeah. I mean? But things settle down. All that dust settles and it kind of drops to the surface. And I try to do things to, so it drops to the bottom. I try to do things to bring that about as well. And when that happens, whatever is left on my mind shows me what is, like the last few things on my mind, those are really what's important to me. Exactly. It's like, oh, okay, so these are things that are on your mind at a surface level that you couldn't even really see because there was all the rest of the shit that was there constantly. Mm. So that's a, that's a major factor. But I'm in a place now where I actually appreciate going camping with other people, which is new to me. It's not like I didn't ever like that, but it would feel like I'm not, like I'm, it's not what I would be going for. It's like I can kick it with you anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> now it's like, I really do appreciate that. Mm-hmm. It's, there's less of a need to go um, camping solo and really go into some sort of seclusion like that. Was your living situation different? Like, did you used to live with people and now you live by yourself? No, I, I lived on my own since I left home for the most for the majority of my time okay. that I that, that I that I um, went away for the, for the majority of my time. Like even yeah, technically right now, but yeah, yeah. You you said um sorry you said that I remember you, we spoke the other week. You said you're reading that book, Social Intelligence, mm. and just reminds you of the importance of <laughs> relationships. Yep, and of course now you're seeing. Your brothers join the sport that you love and dedicate your life to. How is that in terms of like just f- focusing on those relationships and trying to nurture them and making the time for them now? Well, in particular with my brothers, bro, may Allah bless these people, man, and yeah. all of our families in general. Yeah. But like you don't understand the blessing you have when you have family. You know what I mean? And it t- sometimes takes you a little while to learn that. And as I chat to elders now, bro, they they... they Understand the process you, you've gone through and where you're at. Some tell you like, man, it wasn't until I was 35 that I was like, damn, family is really it. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was just, yeah. so it's like, damn. So in general, just that, like, I forgot the question entirely, but. It's mainly about like the importance of um, relationships and not only just being on yourself mm. because isolation can be, a lot of people are pushing for isolation, but then it comes to a certain extent. You don't want to be isolated too much. Well, it can become an escape. True. I feel more comfortable when there's no one around. That must be what I should be doing all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just look for that. That's not the answer. It can be a solution temporarily and it's going to serve a purpose, but that's not the answer. And the reason being, this book that Ali's talking about when we caught up, bro, it just highlights to you how social of a being we are. It's, it, it's tied into us on a core level and we're actually healthier and happier for being in positive social scenarios, you know, and to have a, a real sense of community. And we all know this, it sounds basic, but this book really knuckles down how important that is and how wired you are for that. Mm-hmm. And also, um, it, the, the, the author is a psychologist. He wrote the book Emotional Intelligence and uh-huh. he ties that into this. So how... The vibe, I guess you would say, <laughs> it, it's something that is an actual thing. The way that you're smiling right now, I'm smiling, I look at you and I'm seeing that smile. Yeah. 
we are wired to connect. Like if, as I'm seeing you, the way that I'm interpreting what I'm seeing is my brain's mirror neurons reflecting back that same experience to me. Mm. So if I see you smile, even if you, there's not a smile on your face, there's so many small mi uh, micro expressions and shit taking place that your brain is picking up on this shit. And the way that you're understanding what that is, how your, your brain actually interprets that is by reflecting that same experience to you. So if you're hanging around someone and he might be feeling a little bit anxious, or he might feel a little bit angry, a little bit stressed or whatever, you would pick up on that and that would be because you're getting that same feedback. Mm -hmm. That's your brain giving you that feeling. To That's how you're interpreting what's going on. So you see that smile, you see that laughter, like you get around it because that's that's literally what's happening. So we're, we're wired to connect. Mm -hmm. We're literally, we're wired to connect and to to seek disconnection is probably beneficial when there's over connection. You know, even from, you know, even, you're dropping gems on us right now. Yeah. Even. <laughs> We're reflecting as, yeah. as you're talking. I, I already know Amazon's just going to yeah. be so intelligent. <laughs> <so bad. laughs> I think I got it here somewhere. But I even, for it. even like, can, going back to the camping mm -hmm. as well, it's like when you go far out enough in Melbourne, you get to a point where there is no 5G, you know, mm -hmm. so you can't use your phone. And then if you're in a social setting, either the person does your head in and you can just walk away and just go to somewhere random or your face to like interact with them and you enjoy like that moment as well. You know, you get that like sort of vibe. But I want to touch back into like the the, the brotherly love, mm. you know what I mean, with Seg and Sasanga. Um, <laughs> has it always been like that? Or is that as you get older, because obviously Sasanga is much younger, mm. Seg's older. As you get older, you start to like realize one another's like quality, like traits and stuff, you know Growing what I mean? Growing up, you're connected in a, just an unconscious way mm -hmm. because you're... Under the same roof. Under the same roof, yeah. you know, and and that's it. That's just how it is. So you have the experiences, positive, negative. Overall, I I love everything about growing up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we did have a bit of a laugh, mm -hmm. and I honest, things change though as you get older. Um, but yeah, it's definitely unconscious when you're younger. For for whatever it is, better or worse, as you get older. What I've seen in our lives is we've all gone and done different things because mm -hmm. we're at different stages in our journey, in life. However, we're starting to have a crossover now based on age, based on shared experience. We kind of understand certain things when we all talk and we're benefiting from that. Yeah. So we're, we're getting much closer because it's not like, uh, it's not a, it's not like you have no choice. This is a choice. Exactly. We're, we're, we love spending time together. So we try to spend time together. Yeah. We train together. We enjoy that. Um, Common interest as well. Yeah. Like Sasanga was telling me the other night, you three and another mate or something were, in a cold plunge pool or something like yep, that. Yep, just yep. chatting and just chatting. You know what I mean? It's like, who the hell sits in cold water? Just, <laughs> just go on the couch or something, you know what I mean? But it's nice. Yeah. You know, so but look, it just does bring you, your, like your relationships to another level. Like mm. I assume the moment you found out they want to take the step and join MMA, you're probably thinking, okay, I want to tell them this. You should train this many days, this eat this and that. Yeah, but it's, also, it's more so the development, I would say. But it's a major point. The common interest is a major yeah. point. It's where you... It brings us together in a major way, like it's a center point. But it's the development in general. Because I've been on these guys for a minute. Yeah. Come hit pads for years. Yeah. Ask him, bro. Yeah. Come hit pads. Come do this. Come do that. I'll have to kind of almost force it because they weren't keen. But I was obviously keen. So I'll be, mm -hmm. I'll be forcing it. Now that they, now they can't get enough pads. You know, it's like, yeah. So. I don't know where we went with that, but what's your what's your thoughts on Andrew Tate saying? <laughs> <laughs> triggered. I'm yeah. instantly triggered when Andrew Tate <laughs> the, gets brought the up. Tate brothers, like the Kikembo brothers. I was saying, um, what's your thoughts on Andrew Tate saying? You know when he went into prison, yeah, <laughs> I mean, he done that podcast with uh, PBD. That first on the five hour one, yeah. The second, sorry, podcast he done with PBD. Yeah, 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 Patrick. He goes, yeah, yeah. yeah, he goes. If I was to go back into prison, yeah. Tristan would be like to me, hey, yo, I'm coming there right in there with you, you know? And he goes, I would not want anyone more to spend <laughs> prison with me other than like Tristan, mm. you know? So, uh, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Look, well, yeah, I, I would go to prison with my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real question. <laughs> I would go to prison with my brother, I'll be honest. No, 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 I would for sure, bro. That's blood, you yeah. know? You're going to be so many things going on blood. there. Yeah. You want your blood with you, bro. That Straight out, you want your blood with you if you can. But... Yeah, look, to bring it back full circle on this brotherly one, it's funny how we develop as in different individuals. 
because Seg's very different to me, I'm very different to Seg, I'm very different to Sang, but we also have many similarities because we grew up together. Mm-hmm. So there's that weird bond, and you know, we have that Surat al-Rahim as well, mm-hmm. that I think it's an actual thing, brother. Like, you're connected, you know? And, yeah, you're connected, bro. I appreciate them a lot, long story short. Yeah. We, yeah. And you appreciate the older you get. I can even see Sasanga coming to this understanding as well himself, like, at a, being a little younger, but old enough to be an adult in, in some ways and understand, you know, where we come from in certain things that we point out and us also understanding where he's at in his development. But it's not like he's 20 years younger than us. It's like I'm five years older than him. Um, yeah, it's a, just a unique time. It's a, it's a blessing right now, you know, to, to see that happen and to see how, yeah, that's just how things work, bro. For me personally, Sung actually asked me this recently. Because I'm like the, the kid that left home, right? Yeah, and yeah. went and did his own thing for a little yeah. bit. He's like, what's that journey like? I go, bro, I'm still on it. <laughs> he goes, what was that journey like leaving home? I go, bro, I'm still on it. Because <laughs> 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 he probably looks at you thinking, yeah, this guy's got on the cover. It's been this long. Yeah, yeah. But look, yeah. the more we spend time together, yeah. the more you get, the more you know, you know your, your brothers, you know their flaws and whatnot. Course, but the sure. more we spend time together, the more you see those things. So yeah. it's even good for him to see that. Exactly. To see, okay, in some areas he might have some traits that are like beneficial and positive and I see, but in some, th- some ways doesn't have his shit together for sure. You, yeah. yeah. And we all don't as well. You know what I mean? Like going back to your answer to him as well. It's like, he looked at you like an adult that's got his shit together, but like adults are just people that are fighting their shit. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Pretty together. much, bro. Some are better hiding it than others. Yeah. Yeah. But mm. yeah, I wanted to bring it back to that podcast conversation real quick. Cause I wanted to ask, so what are your top three podcasts right now? Oh, if I had to put out a top three right now, and they don't have to be the whole <coughs> self-developmental yeah, yeah. and whatnot. Huberman's obviously in there. I'll put the Jocko one out there because I, for whatever reason, I started um, going back to that recently. I never really locked into Jocko's he podcast. Does long podcast, bro. It does, but I, I come across... Three hours he's, plus, he's man. Very, like, the ones I want to listen to. <laughs> he speaks at a slower pace as well. Yeah. The, the stay, like yeah. where yeah. I'm at, I seem to find a lot of value in that. Yeah. Like, um, especially... Depth talks, not shallow. Yeah. yeah, and they're interesting and I can get around it. But there's some episodes where... We'll have an army guy on and they're just reminiscing about army days and I, of course, yeah. next, next, next. <laughs> yeah. You know, honestly, you know what I think of Jocko when he talks Jocko, on podcasts? Yeah. Like, you know when you go camping, someone gets a torch and they start talking to you with a deep voice? I think that's, that's Jocko. That's you know what it is? It's probably because intense. the roof he's in is just yeah. black. Yeah. Yeah. Intense, also, intense. the voice he puts on. Is, yeah. You have to get up at 4 a.m. There's, yeah. there's not too many other podcasts. I haven't really been on a big podcasting. I would yeah. have to say Huberman just because that's what I have been dipping into for like I said, those protocols. Yeah. And he does got, he's got, bro, he's done such a great job. Mm-hmm. He's done a hectic like job. Because you said you even podcasts and books, it's more for entertainment purposes. Mm. For someone that's listening and goes, oh, I'd love to read like a good fiction book, but I've only read nonfiction. Or same for podcasts. Like, is it like a murder mystery podcast you recommend? Is there any like a fiction books maybe that it's like, hey, this is a good start? Yeah, books wise. Fiction. Fiction, like, fiction yeah, books. Like for entertainment. Yeah. Uh, Anime. Anime. <laughs> Look, don't even get me started. You see, how I, tri- see how I triggered I got just there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that? Man- manga? Manga. So. Uh, I saw your feet crawl up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said manga. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like full circle though. You remember like, you remember watching. Oh, I would yeah. say uh, manga wise, look, if you get around entertainment, for me, One Piece goes hard. Yeah. And right now it's getting peak. I was just telling Sasanga about this. We're going hard. Joy Boy? Yeah. He knows. Yeah. Hey, you have to date on the on the manga though. Not the manga. Okay, I could ruin it. I could, do you want me to ruin it for you? I already know what's happening. Okay, okay. It, it gets peak. Long story short, it goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even get it out. There's so much going on. Up Walla, I'm being serious. There's so many. It's elite. Um, the Alchemist is probably my favorite recommendation as a as a as, as a fictional book. What was that? That's an anime, and that goes hard. I'm talking about that. <laughs> you have to bring it full circle again. <laughs> <You're still laughs> <laughs> but hey, while he's onto one, Full Metal Alchemist goes hard. It's a, it's another, it's another bang of an anime. Oh, no, well, yeah. <laughs> That's a legendary That's a legendary Hey, and to be honest, it comes back because it's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. That's actually yeah. the title. Of it, so he, he understands. But the Alchemist is just a beautiful book, man. It's such a beautiful book, and I could read that. Many, many times over. Uh, yeah, that'll be my recommendation, fictional-wise. Other than that, f- fantasy, 
There's a book by um, Terry Goodkind. is a great author. Mm. Terry Goodkind. Straight fantasy, these books. Um, yeah, suss those out. Yeah, The Alchemist, I, I can't get over that. I love that book. Yeah, I so think beautiful, yeah, bro. I think Seuss that a also, lot Dune. Dune. Dune? Dune. Is the movie good or is the book? The movie good? is elite. I like the movie. I like the movie. I've heard, I've heard bad reviews of it. Like, no, nah, it's elite, but they can't do justice to the book. Mm. There's just what it's movie not like can. Seven books or something? Like, I think there's two. Oh, uh, well. There's Dune, there's Dune Messiah. There the might be a few that more. Thick? The first one is massive, yeah. It's decent size. Probably the biggest book I've read. Yeah. I think Harry Potter's the biggest one. <laughs> Order Phoenix 800. This goes oh, hard. Yeah, Dune, Dune goes hard. Let me nerd out for a moment because of the um the Timothy Chalamet. The not the landscape. Who's it? Who? <laughs> you don't know who that is? Dune, the actor Timothy Chalamet. Oh, okay, nah, I don't French know boy. that's his name. Yeah, the French, yeah. Yeah. French guy. He did, the, he he did a Zendaya, decent job. And then Zendaya and Tom Holland. Love Circle. And yeah. Yep, yep. And then he speaks French and everyone goes crazy. Yeah, look, not me. <laughs> 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 <It's> like, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> French is in my five-year plan, <laughs> but I don't get triggered like that. <laughs> <laughs> but bro, the book is just, what I love about books, it creates a whole different world. Mm. And because it's all thought, you think about it, vision, you're watching this thing. It's like watching a play, except it's all on screen. It's not like, it's not that live, but it's live to an extent. But mm. you don't have to do too much thinking. You watch and you get drawn along by the drama, what's going on. The book, you formulate, there's so much going on for you to actually get into the book. Man, I remember just reading, I, as a kid, bro, I would stay up reading till like 3, 4 a.m. You know, kids stay up now, 4, 5 a.m. Yeah. on the, uh, I'll be oh. nonstop. Like, I'll sneak out, read out where there's a little bit of light. Mum would catch us lacking, mm. close the door, get, in, get inside, what are you doing? Like, that's, that's, um, that's how deep it goes for us, man. That's the second sangha the same, yeah, yeah. <laughs> books wise. Yeah, bro, just, you're forced to create a whole nother world in your head mm -hmm. that you just get sucked into. There's, uh, Dune does a good job because there's a lot of political stuff, which as you get older, you can appreciate more that is going on in those books that is very similar to what's going on yeah. right now. And you realize is what's been going on throughout history. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You create that imagination in your head. I wanted to bring the conversation <coughs> back to something you spoke about um, it's called earlier. I wanted to ask, what is a day in the life of Sem look like? Or a day in the week? Depends. Or am I on point or week, am I off point? The week of <laughs> What's the right way to word that? The day in the life? The week of a life? <laughs> Whatever. day in the life, look. Long story short, I wake up. Mm -hmm. I set my intentions, even if it's a very hurried one. Sometimes I make my prayer, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. That's why I said on point or not on point. And then I get stuck into training. Once I get into training, that's, that's pretty much the rest of my day. It's sure. I'll hit the first session hard. And then in between, I'll have two, three hours. And that's when I, depending on how effective I am, I'll either have things to execute or I'll have to find what I need to be doing. And then it's a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. Usually communication, uh, small tasks like creating content. Oftentimes I'll be catching up with the boys, having coffee. Yeah, we do that quite often after training. Go then to I'm what's the go to quickly? Go to coffee. Go to coffee place. Yeah. No, no, they're just yeah, long black, long black. Order, your order. But it's changed recently to a, to a short mac. Okay, I started help. getting fancy. Not every cafe does it. I go, give me a short mac, put a little bit of cream in there. Yeah. And they look at me like, what's going on here? I go, put a little bit of cream in there. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you making all? Yeah, <laughs> just put a little bit of cream in there. Wait, wait, what's a short mac? A mac's already pretty short. A short mac is <laughs> is a uh, espresso. Yeah. With some foam. Okay. Yeah. With the cream. With, with the cream. With the actual yeah. cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But, I, but I ask them to put actual cream and they go, you want foam? I go, if you have actual cream. Yeah, whip it up. Yalla. Yeah, just smash it on. Goes hard. Yeah. But the long black was my go-to from like uni to like I turned pro. Yeah. Effective. Yeah. And what, never been a latte? Like that's the normal, like usually yeah. the normal order is you go from hot chocolate to mocha. Yeah, then yeah. To that's your the progression. That's the progression. You, know, nah. you went straight to long black? Long black because I go, bro, what am I here for? Caffeine. That is true. You yeah. know, the, the rest of it was not, was never a thing to me. It wasn't demons. It's even to now, it's not a thing to me. The, the cream is just the, it's a fancy little just bit a of taste. Off, yeah. I you like just it. sound fancy, yeah? Yeah, I'm a bit <laughs> of a fancy <laughs> guy. <laughs> Wave the hand. Yalla. For sure. Nah, that's it. So we have coffees. If you're ever in Collingwood, you want to be checking out, firstly, Gip Street Canteen. I got to shout out Robbie at Gip Street Canteen. Okay. 
<laughs> There's also in Elite Coffee at A Coffee. Say it. A Coffee. That's the name. A Coffee. Okay. Letter A Coffee. Um, Japanese is there, crew. Is there another one in Collingwood? You right? I'm just hoping you say this one name. Street. No, no. Is is Street is another name of it. Proud Mary. Okay. Auntie Pegs. No. Auntie um, Pegs, that's, yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, Auntie Pegs goes hard. So you're a coffee guy? Yeah, I'm a coffee guy. Okay, yeah. I have got a whole list. We were actually around the corner from you what the other day. Yeah, yeah. We were at um, El Presso. All Press. All Press. All Press Espresso. All Another Press elite Espresso. coffee place in Collingwood. Mm. Um, but bro, else? Collingwood's got the most. Right, just, this is just the inner. Collingwood's a peak area, bro. In a suburb, In a few bro. ways. <laughs> I got in a fight with a lady the other day. Yeah, and yeah. And usually I'm, I don't, usually I'm, I don't got no road rage, nothing. Like I'm pretty calm or like behind the wheel, you know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> I've, 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 I've got a, like a coffee date um, with a guy. <coughs> like I'm meeting up with a friend for a coffee. <laughs> Why are you explaining yourself so much, bro? <laughs> it's making it worse, man. Just go on. <laughs> anyway, I've gone, I've gone to the uh, cool. It's like around like 9 a.m. or something like that. So it's like peak traffic or whatever. Looking for a spot. Now I'm getting stressed because just looking for traffic has made me late to the thing, you know what I mean? Anyway, I've now gone like, you know where... Um, that place is There's like a Bunnings Around the corner Or something like that yep, yep. So I've gone all the way up there Which is a six minute walk That's right near the gym Yeah near the Same gym. street as the gym Bunnings on the same street as the gym On the same street You just gotta get all the way down Bro I was there pretty much Yeah Anyway so then I find a spot As I find a spot I'm now like reverse parking into it I'm waiting for the lady To like indicate or whatever Then she pulls up right next to me And then she just starts Giving it to my life You know what I mean And I already knew This was coming You know what I mean But when When she pulled up Like window to window As soon as I saw her Typical white lady with a small little chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to slam it back into it. Do you get it? Because usually it's just like, okay, cool. You can't let that like affect wow. you. You know what I mean? Anyway, going back to that spot. Yeah, chihuahua is a rap, bro. Yeah, it is. Point. And especially when it's a lady with a cap. And I know like she's got like a sugar daddy or something like that. She doesn't have to work for <laughs> nothing. Anyway. Yeah. You gotta love Collingwood. <laughs> you gotta love Collingwood. Well, Collingwood's an interesting area. But apparently that place has like, is the highest murder rate in Victoria or something like that. Does it? Yeah, I go, why? It's so bougie to me. But I think because there's a lot of crackheads around. Mm -hmm. There must be a lot of like shankings and things like that going on that, yeah. you know, add to that toll. But in a suburb. That's a beautiful area to me. It's like, beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's bougie, bro. It's like what you, you know. Do you get inspiration being around inner suburbs? Inspiration? Yeah. like In what sense? Like. I don't know, something about the in, like, inner suburbs when I go for a coffee there, something like depending on like- I, I like the vibe sometimes, but sometimes the vibe gets a bit too peak for me. It's the, the go-go-go vibe? Yeah. 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 <laughs> now that's a go, just there's a few things about oh, depending yeah, on where you're yeah. at. Yep. It just gets a little bit too much. It doesn't, <laughs> I don't let it impact me to that extent. <laughs> I just understand the world and how it is and I, I, I just appreciate the vibe. You feel me? Yeah. I go, okay, it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. It's very, it's very colorful. Yeah. It's a very colorful area, bro. <laughs> Going back to uh, like the routine things, yeah. So when you get in a mode like where you feel like, ah, oh, crap, like I'm just not like feeling it. Do you have like techniques to get yourself back into? Yeah, self talk, like, self talk, okay. self talk. Like, so if it I, works. Yeah, bro. If you notice how you're talking, it's it's often it's a problem when you're not conscious of how your self talk is. It's mm -hmm. just occurring. You can end up in any sort of way with 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 poor self talk. You won't even know it. Oh, this is that, or I'm tired, or you got to be onto it, and you got to know, um, which is where meditation comes in, because you want that awareness to be able to see where you're at. So, straight off the bat, self talk. Mm -hmm. If I notice myself slipping, I know that there's times to take a break or whatever. So I'll just double check against some standards, injury, a few other things, and it's like, well, it doesn't really check against that. We've got to switch our self talk up, and it's you just literally switch it up, and it works like. Hey, this is what we're doing. This is, you know, we're strong. We're better than that. We don't think that way. This is how we do things. Um, you know the value of this, you know. And just give yourself strong, positive communication. That's what I do for myself when I notice things might be a little hard to get going or whatever might be going on. Yeah. G yourself up. It's not fake because you already know it's true. You're just in a certain place right now. Mm -hmm. And you go, hey, no, no, no. I'm a world champion. True. I'm, a, I'm a professional mixed martial artist. I'm one of the best out there. This is what I'm here to do. Uh, these are just small, small examples, mm -hmm. but the self talk can go anywhere. Yeah. Did you ever struggle with overthinking? Yeah, to this day, I'll, I'll struggle with overthinking yeah. sometimes. Um, yeah, less so right now. I'm talking the, just because when there's a fight, it just takes so much priority that a lot of my overthinking can be with um, what might be the best thing to do, what else might be going on, what are the, where am I at with what to do. What's, it's like quite clear what is most important, you know. So. Right now, no, but overthinking, yeah. Yeah. 
That's true. Going back to the fighting, I reckon um, we switched the conversation in regards to <coughs> our boys got a a big fight that's up and coming mm-hmm. in about fifteen days, if I'm not wrong. Around there. Around there. Yeah. On the 18th. two weeks. Two weeks from tomorrow. Two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. Um, how are you feeling leading up coming into the fight? How's your body? I feel good. My body is where it's always at at the end of camp. One or two small niggles, mm-hmm. but I'm fit. I'm sharp. I'm strong. Alhamdulillah. So, sure. yeah, I'm feeling good. I, heard, you go. No, I was going to do off fighting. Like it's similar. But what's some advice for some people that want to start getting fit? Like, well, obviously, is it just like a pick a cardio you like and do it? Or Bro, I got this question so many times. Yeah. And I'm not on, like, podcast aside, just in general. You know, when you run into, it's like, hey, man, what do I do to get fit? Yeah. Run. <laughs> get off the couch. You exercise. Yeah. Show exercise. Up. What strategies might work for you? Join a gym, all common ones. Get around the right community where, again, you're part of that community. You have to rise to their standard. But you need to know a lot more about an individual to give them proper advice, you know? Yeah. Where you're at, what's holding you back from training? Why aren't you training? Why have you tried and it hasn't worked? You've got to look into those things. What have you tried consistently? What are your repeat efforts like? And what stopped you? These are questions I'll have to even ask myself in any other area to learn about what's actually stopping me, what's holding me back here. So yeah, do that. Firstly, the base, the answers are there. It's basic. Exercise. Eat right. Balance is key too. So exercise, but also chill. Eat well, but also kind of have a off day. Get around the right community. Joining a gym, a martial arts gym, massive because there's community there. There's training there. Suss it out. See how you feel at each gym that you go to. Don't rush to commit. Just commit to the health and training part, but spend one to two weeks to get to know the vibe at the gym. Do I like this gym? Yes, no. And then lock in and go from there. But if things aren't working for you, you're trying to get fit, you're not getting fit, you've got to look at what, what, else is, what else is stopping you. That self-talk might be a thing. What, what, what do you tell yourself to stop training? What do you tell yourself to not go to the gym? What are those reasons? Are they valid? Are they not valid? Look into that. For, yeah. so, for anyone that's like trying to get into like martial arts, yeah, what should they look for for in the gym? Sorry, are you going there for pure martial arts or to be a champion or to be a professional? Just to think. martial arts. Not I'm trying. Not a person trying to become a professional fighter or something along those lines. Just I want a basic. You want regular good qualities mm-hmm. in a person. You know, and you would always look to the coach, the owner of the gym, because things are going to stem from the top down. The culture will come from there. So, one, you're looking for martial arts. You want it to be effective. Look at his accomplishments. Look at his history. What's his training like? Has he competed before? Does he compete now? Yeah. Those are important factors. I would say those. And, yeah, th- that will tell you a lot. Also... Does the gym have fighters at the moment? Do they have people that compete? Fighters or not, do they have people competing in grappling? Are there people competing in, in Muay Thai or whatever it might be? If they have people competing, most likely they've got a process for developing skills there. Yeah, I like that. Should we swing it back to now the fighting? Go for Anyone? it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so <coughs> up, you got your upcoming fight. Um, I heard your, your opponent uh, like dropped out and whatnot. Mm. Has that affected your game in any way? Not really. Last minute curveball? No, not really, bro, to be honest. Wallah, because I've been preparing for a similar kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I know there was a recent change I just told you about, but we won't announce that just yet just because we don't know Handy okay. that's going through. But there's most likely that's going through. Mm-hmm. But I'll start with the initial opponent change because my opponent got changed twice now. Not a major issue to me, that first one. Because I feel really confident against both of the guys that I'm fighting. Mm-hmm. Preparation wise, what changed? I just had to sharpen different tools for the different guy that I was going to be fighting. You know, if I'm fighting the Southpaw guy, which might happen, then yeah, work my Southpaw strategy. Mm-hmm. And if I'm fighting this next guy, you know, Abdullah, mm-hmm. the, the, the taller, he's tall, Sudanese. I feel like it's worth mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big difference. Big difference, bro. Yeah. Uh, How tall are we talking? Like, I think it's six three, six four. Ish, yeah. Mm, that changes my preparation strategy wise. Yeah. Everything else is already 
it's kind of in place. Mm. Strategy wise, yeah, we've got a different strategy in place for this guy. Mm. Mm. How do you deal with the nerves just prior to a fight? Because I, do I do remember Joe Rogan speaking about this. Um, <coughs> what do you call it? I don't know who the podcast was with, but like the whole, the whole sense of like fighting, whether it's like wrestling, judo, and whatnot. Um, like professional fighters, all of them are professional for a reason. You know, they put like the hard yards. Mm. But often that like one percent of difference is how they control their nerves when they're on stage in front of like a thousand people, you know what I mean? And obviously at the Melbourne Pavilion, mm. there's gonna be people watching, we're gonna be coming, mm. you know. What goes through your head just before a fight? Just before well, so when I'm in there, there's no real nerves in there for me. I do get nerves beforehand though, like in the back, you mm -hmm. do warming up, there'll be little moments where you get little butterflies every now and then. But bro, it's part of the process. Yeah. I embrace it. I like it. It's like it tells me that I'm doing what I need to be doing. Like I'm here now, okay? Good, we're ready for it. We're good to go. That's how I deal with it. It does come it's less about the self talk for me in those moments, mm -hmm. but I'll use that if necessary. It's just you're so familiar with the nerves by that point. You don't need the self talk. You know what's going on. It's mm -hmm. like you're about to fight. There's nerves. Mm -hmm. Still do your warm up. Get prepped. Um, routine helps me, I guess. You know, and experience at this stage. I pray. I meditate. I breathe. I stretch. I lie down. I, I stretch again. I shadow box. I drill. I hit pads. I lie down. And I just run that process until it's time to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you document like on the like the journey to the fight? The day before, like on the fight, have you ever thought of doing that? No, no. I've, I've thought about it, but yeah. I haven't documented it. Um, I've had one person document day of the fight and my amateur days. Actually, my path to hex um, debut. Yeah. Pretty sure my one of my amateur debuts. Ah. One of my mates, yeah, actually documented like sick memory at the back end. There's a lot of the same things. I pray, except back then I didn't do my meditation, okay, and my breath work. But I would pray and then warm up. But it was much more new back then that experience it's like what is what do i do it's <laughs> like <laughs> after prayer which was like the most clearest obvious one you're like yeah. you know <laughs> you're about to fight you know yeah. <laughs> it's like what do i do uh, yeah so i guess guidance and having the right coaches then helped me out so you just hit pads okay you warm up mm -hmm. but it was a different energy then i would feel more less nerves then yeah. swear to god yeah. than i would now mm. and that's interesting is like ignorance Maybe, the maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. But I guess you still get hurt in the gym every now and then. I'm talking like to the body and shit like that. So you know what the consequences are. You see your teammates get knocked out. You yeah. see what how rough it is. And it's like, you know what the consequences are. But I guess it's just so, maybe the stakes get higher. Maybe the stakes get higher. Maybe that's what it is. It's true, yeah. 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 Or maybe I wasn't able to recognize what the nerves that were going on. Yeah, you've grown. Yeah. You now know what you feel. Just like, just go through it, man. And also, hindsight. In hindsight, it's like, yeah, maybe in the moment then it was a different story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do remember feeling so calm before walking out that it was weird. And I was like, yeah, damn. Like, I was actually expecting a different feel, a different yeah. situation. And then I fought one and I was like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I've always wondered what goes in the mind of a fighter. Just you do get nerves. Like, you, you'll, 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 you'll get, before the walkout, yeah, it's not nerves. I don't get anything like this guy's going to kill me or anything yeah. like that. It's just like... Just the adrenaline pump. Yeah. yeah, but it's also like, hey, yeah, we're about to fight. Like, you know, you, you know what you got to watch out for. You, If you know you're watching out for a shin to the head, yeah. even just thinking about that shin to the head, you're like, yeah. it doesn't give you the best feeling. It's like, okay, well, that's not touching us today. Like, we need a jab. We need to move. We need to faint. We need to make sure we're seeing that coming. Get ready for those reactions. But it's your body's way of probably... Like a protective mechanism as well, you know what I mean? Just to be more like alert, you're vigilant going into that fight. Because if yeah. you weren't like as nervous, then it's like you're a bit more sloppy, I guess, to a sense. Yeah, LeBro, you know? I've actually felt that before. But one, yeah, it's that. That's what's happening. Threat mm. detection in your brain, the amygdala doing its job. Yeah. As it should be, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be worried if it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember being out the back for one of my fights, my second pro fight, and I just discovered this ability to get real present so i went hard on it that camp and that lead up and i was injured in the last week so i had no choice i couldn't train so i had to just spend my time meditating and doing shit like that but i got to the fight i was so calm i remember like everything was so surreal and my coach was even like um 
pretty good. Like, yeah, yeah. do you want me to G you up? And I'm like, don't G me up, bro. <laughs> I'm in a Z state. Yeah. yeah. You prefer that, right? I prefer that. But yeah. I remember even walking into the cage and I, in hindsight, I remember going, I should have been a little, that's why I started moving more oh, in my okay. last few. I should have moved a little bit more because the fight started and I was so zen, I guess, that I was like, got, took me off guard just a little bit. Get in there, still be present and aware and locked into the bloke you're about to fight, but move, move. Get the blood flowing, get the body moving, you know, get ready. Mm. That's just basics. Like, you want your body firing. Yeah. For sure. Do you hear things going on in the background sometimes? Sometimes. As, as focused as you are, because, like, we've got <laughs> footage of, like... <laughs> <laughs> I lose my voice every fight. Yeah, good, good. Hey, you do hear you you do hear the voices that that support you. Yeah? you. yeah, you do, and it does exactly count. It does. It's actually you need to learn how to use that as fuel yeah. and not let it. Remember what you guys came to one of the amateur fights. Um, you kind of think, I think every amateur fight. Yeah, pro yeah. fights we've been a bit. And I actually remember you guys started ripping my name, Sam. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. I got a little yeah. too yeah. g yeah. and I remember just going like. That gives you energy, yeah, yeah. like you know. Yourself, yeah? And I just, so oh, I started throwing things. Yeah. Then I almost got caught, and I was like, "Relax, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> kick back, kick back. Let's let's double check what's going on." But it's good because that energy counts. Yeah, that man. counts. Imagine you're you're buckling, and it, even from your coach. I remember being in situations like the fight that I lost. I remember my uh, my coach um, saying, yelling out certain things in the end, but you don't know you're cruising. You're fighting. You're like. Oh, and he's like yelling out like, are you fucking cruising? Like what's going on? Yeah. Do you want to win this? That type of thing. Yes, it, you hear that. Yes, it impacts you. Yes, it changes your, your your emotions and what you do because the energy changes. Like this is another person actually just geeing you up, you know, mm. getting you moving. So it's it's worth, um yeah, yeah, it's worth doing. It's like the massive Super Bowl in, you know, Dragon Ball Z. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're getting all their energy yeah. and stuff to the street though. Yeah. Um, Alhamdulillah Anything else? Nah, khalas wala. Beautiful So we'll wrap it up there um, We'll be at the fight Inshallah, inshallah. We'll be yelling inshallah. Hopefully inshallah. the next Let's go. morning We don't have a voice to speak We won't definitely won't be doing a podcast The next morning of um, But just for our new listeners Where can they find you on bro? Instagram At King Kakembo Yeah That's it for now There, was, there should be a website Coming up soon mm -hmm. Before this fight um, Before we end it actually You've got to grant us access Behind the scenes to vlog Oh, done. Yeah, because capture some content. And hopefully, inshallah, we want to do some videos with you as yeah. well. Roll. You want to lock it in? Yeah, Def done. definitely done. <laughs> done. Done. It'll be easy work. For yeah. sure. Allah. Done. Um, yeah, just make sure to like, share, subscribe. We're going to have like an hour chat with Sam off the podcast. You know the <laughs> drill. We'll see you guys next week. Take care.